Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so web applications these days are ubiquitous. And one of the reasons they are ubiquitous is because JavaScript is supported by all major browsers, all major platforms. Unfortunately, there is an issue with JavaScript, and that is it is slow. Uh, for example, this graph here shows that inference times of a neural network in TensorFlow.js is actually 2x slower as compared to inference times in uh, TensorFlow Native. So what's the solution? One solution that has been explored in past is to actually execute the native code directly inside the browser inst instead of JavaScript. And one of the earliest technologies to do that was ActiveX. It would take a C++ code, compile it down to a code signed binary, which can be executed in Internet Explorer. Unfortunately, so it was fast, but it was not secure and not portable. Uh, then Google also tried to solve this problem with its native client and portable native client. Uh, these are sandbox environment over uh, LNBM IR and x86 code. And these are fast, safe, but they were not portable to other browsers. In 2011, another technology came out known as mscripton, which would take uh, these native languages and compile it down to a subset of JavaScript known as asm.js. That asm.js is faster than JavaScript because it uses type coercions to get away with dynamic checks of JavaScript. Um, it is safe and portable. Unfortunately, it was slower than native. And since JavaScript does not have 64-bit integers, asm.js also does not support it. In 2017, uh, WebAssembly rolled out. WebAssembly is a new uh, uh, low-level language to which you can compile these native languages and execute, it direct, uh, execute the application directly inside the browser. Uh, so it is safe and portable. But the question was if it is fast. To answer this question, the paper that introduced WebAssembly did some evaluation on PolyB and C benchmarks. Um, and they find that WebAssembly is only 26% slower than native. Not only that, if we actually see the implementations of WebAssembly, they have been continuously being improved uh, over uh, in the, on these benchmarks. For example, in 2017, uh, there were only seven benchmarks within 10% of native, which increased to 15 benchmarks in 2019. So uh, one thing to note out here is that WebAssembly is the future. And one of the ways that WebAssembly can be used is with, the, uh, with uh, an application backend, which is fast, written in WebAssembly, and an application front end which is written in JavaScript, which is programmer friendly. But the question is, are those PolyB and C benchmarks uh, really representative of WebAssembly, but for uh, applications WebAssembly is being used? Uh, we actually tried spec benchmarks and find that WebAssembly is, instead of 26%, it's 55% slower. So uh, we also tried. Uh, uh, also analyze the performance counter data and find that WebAssembly is slower because of several reasons. And these reasons are some missing optimizations, um, some of the design issues inherent to WebAssembly, and some of the restrictions that are applied by the browser, uh, browser environment due to which uh, the, these implementation cannot do uh, good optimizations. So let's look at uh, a brief overview of WebAssembly before we get into the details. So WebAssembly's code is a stack machine. Um, and the, each WebAssembly module contains this code and a function table. That function table represents what are the functions defined in that code. WebAssembly can interoperate with JavaScript. Uh, it is safe due to its type system and due to two explicit checks that it provides. So first is stack overflow check. At every function call, it will check whether the function call stack that has been allocated goes beyond the, brown, uh, grows beyond the uh, bound of maximum sex size. And if that happens, then an exception is thrown. The other one is indirect function call check. So every indirect function uh, instruction is represented by a function pointer, which, uh, which has to be checked whether it is valid or not. That is, point to a valid function. And the function it points to is actually is same as the, has the same signature as a function, as a uh, signature specified in that instruction. So there are two checks uh, for every indirect function call. So let's look at what can be the good benchmarks of WebAssembly. And when WebAssembly designers designed WebAssembly, they had some use cases in mind. Uh, and these are the use cases, scientific applications, image video processing, uh, compilers, debuggers, and POSIX applications. So a question to ask is, are those poly -benc benchmarks used? Are they good representative of these use cases? So these are poly -benc benchmarks. These are 24 scientific kernels. Uh, there are around 100 lines of code. and uh, uh, the, use case, the examples that shown here are, are doing some matrix multiplication or matrix vector multiplication. 
So it's obvious that these are not representative because they are scientific kernels and can only repre represent a small set of uh, scientific applications. On the other hand, the spec CPU benchmark suite uh, is actually a better representative. For example, uh, eight of these applications are scientific applications. All of them are policy applications. And they are large in the sense that uh, they are around 1,000 to 300,000 lines of code. But we just cannot compile spec benchmarks and execute them in a browser, uh, because these spec benchmarks require a system call interface, uh, which browser does not have. So we use Brozix. Uh, Brozix appeared in s 2017, and it provides such an interface for JavaScript applications running in web browser. Uh, it has a kernel running and uh, in a process, and each of uh, the other uh, Brozix processes, they run in a web worker and can communicate with the kernel with the, uh, with the help of system calls and messages. Great, uh, but we cannot use Brozix to execute WebAssembly benchmarks because uh, it supports JavaScript. And the way the communication between each process and the kernel happens is using shared array buffer. Unfortunately, WebAssembly does not support that shared array buffer. So we developed Brozix Wasm, which provides the same system call interface for WebAssembly programs. Uh, so how the, the tool chain of Brozix Wasm, it, it will take a C++ file and compile it down to a JavaScript file. That JavaScript file will contain the WebAssembly module of that C++ file and a runtime, the Brozix runtime. The Brozix Wasm runtime provides C library and communication with Brozix Wasm kernel. So now remember that, uh, that shared array buffer uh, was being used by Brozix, which unfortunately is not supported by WebAssembly. So how can we how can we solve that problem? And that is one way to solve this problem, is to have a shadow copy of that shared, of, of WebAssembly memory in the form of shared array buffer. When our system call happens, we are going to copy that memory uh, from WebAssembly memory to shadow copy. Unfortunately, it has high copying overhead and 2x memory usage. So we instead have a, a, another approach, in that we have only a small 64 MB of shared array buffer, which is an auxiliary buffer, and whatever that system call references to, we copy only that part. And if uh, that system call requires the size of more than 64 MB, we will split that system call into several messages. So this has minimal execution overhead and minimum memory requirements. Fine, uh, we developed Brozix Wasm, but unfortunately we, will find, we actually found some, uh, some other performance issues. For example, the graph here shows that uh, PowerA benchmark has around 10% of time of PowerA benchmark is spent in Brozix Wasm. And we had these performance issues in file system, system implementation and pipes. Uh, I'm going to talk about one of those issues. So these three benchmarks were doing a lot of appends, small appends, and these small appends are in a file buffer. So uh, when you do an append to a file buffer, it has to copy everything uh, and reallocate the memory. And we solve this issue with the help, uh, uh, by making sure that whenever an append happens, we are going to grow the buffer by at least a page size. Many other uh, performance uh, issues were solved, and we actually improved the performance of Brozix Wasm by 5x around five times. The overhead of Brozix Wasm finally was brought down to around at maximum 1.1%, uh, and an average overhead was about 0.2% uh, over the spec benchmarks. So in summary, uh, Brozix Wasm provides system call interface for WebAssembly applications with low overhead. We also need a harness, a benchmark harness to actually uh, execute these uh, spec benchmarks automatically. And we developed a Brozix spec harness. The way it works is uh, for, uh, for a given benchmark, it will launch the browser and the kernel inside it uh, and a harness.js file. That will launch the spec invoke utility in spec benchmark suite, um, which uh, given a benchmark uh, will load the correct uh, WebAssembly module in, inside the file system of the browser. And when that happens, uh, we ask the Brozix spec to, uh, to launch the perf utility of Linux to get some performance counter data. When the perf is attached, the main thread is launched, and when the benchmark exits, we stop the perf. And at the end, we can download the benchmark results uh, and the perf results, and we also check the benchmark results for the correctness. So finally, we are able to execute WebAssembly. Uh, in Google Chrome, it is 55% slower. Now, look at, let, now let's look at why. Um, and uh, before we look into why, let's 
look at what are the challenges for a JIT compiler. So JIT compiler has to provide portability, and to provide portability, it gener generates the code at runtime. To generate the code at runtime, it has to generate this code within some time constraints. And while doing this, it might be missing some optimizations. So the question is, if WebAssembly suffer from these time constraints. Also, uh, as we saw earlier, WebAssembly provides explicit checks. And the question is whether WebAssembly suffer from these checks or not. To answer these questions, let's look at a very sm a, a small benchmark of matrix multiplication. Uh, and as you can see, it always performs around 2.5x lower for different metric sizes. On one hand, uh, on the uh, on one hand we have Clang generated code. On the, on the other hand, we have Chrome generated code. And we can see that the Chrome generated code is around two times more as compared to Clang. Now let's look at one of the uh, let's look at the reasons. And one of the reasons is because the Clang generates this add instruction, which is able to take x86 memory address as one of its operand. On the other hand, Chrome takes uh, Chrome allocates an explicit register for it. So this uh, not only adds uh, extra instructions, this also adds uh, extra register pressure. Chrome, even though it uh, takes three extra registers than Clang, it is still generating three register splits. And this is because of its fast, but unfortunately poor nearness care register allocator as compared to Clang's greedy register allocator. Now since it's generating spills and it also has an information that, oh, in the first iteration of the loop, the data is already in the registers, so while load it again, it will also generate some extra loops. So in summary, we saw that matrix multiplies slower because of several reasons, but the question is if the spec benchmarks suffer from these slowdowns or not. And we will answer this question using uh, performance counter data generated using perf utility. So the first uh, two data that we're looking at are loads and stores executed. And uh, for example, in bzip2 benchmark, uh, around three times more loads are executed in WebAssembly as compared to native. And around 6x more stores are executed in WebAssembly as compared to native. So why is that the reason? The first thing is, uh, these JIT compilers has to know uh, where does the GC roots point to so that they can start the garbage collection. And the only way that they can know is it's using by reserving a specific register. So they reserve the R13 register and now one less register is available for the code generation for the code generator. And as we have seen earlier, it does, it uses linear scan register allocator which performs poorly. And since it was not using all x86 addressing modes, it has to allocate, it has to use another register to, uh, to uh, in, in its instruction set. In, uh, so all of this adds up, uh, increases the register pressure, which actually increases the number of register spills, and that could actually lead to more loads and stores. The other counter, the two counters that we are seeing are uh, branch instructions and conditional branch instructions. And we can see that uh, WebAssembly executes, uh, in GeoMain it executes around 1.5x, around 1.75x uh, branch instructions and uh, conditional branch instructions. So remember, there were two checks. One was, uh, one was to ensure that the, num the stack over does not overflow. And the other was to ensure that the indirect function calls are valid. The other check that we have seen earlier is to uh, is some extra jumps that are added uh, to avoid the register spilling, and uh, these these three reasons leads to uh, uh, increased number of conditional branches and branches. So combine all this with some poor instruction selection, we get the effect of larger code size, and hence more instructions are being executed. But this has another effect. So this can actually lead to a larger instruction cache misses. And with a larger instruction cache message, the CPU cycles, the CPU has to wait and spend some idle cycles while waiting for the instruction to occur. So in summary, um, we had, uh, we developed Brozix Wasm and Brozix Spec, uh, which, perform, which enables execution of spec benchmarks in browsers. And uh, we have performed the study on WebAssembly and find that WebAssembly is around 55% slower in Google Chrome, 45% slower in uh, Mozilla Firefox. And the reasons are, it has uh, that the, these implementations does not do some uh, uh, optimizations, they are missing. Uh, it, 
and the, the restrictions applied by the browser environment, uh, due to which uh, there are some reserved registers. And some of the design issues inherent to WebAssembly, which includes this uh, stack overflow and indirect function call checks. Thank you. Questions? Not so fast? Okay. <laughs> A hey, quick question about, um, I guess the, the point of using spec in this context is that you don't want to rewrite the benchmarks, and so you want to enrich the system in order to run the benchmarks. Sorry, I, I couldn't follow. I'm just thing. thinking about the spec benchmarks, and you know, I, I feel like it might be the wrong benchmark for, for WebAssembly. Like, why do you want to uh, use Browsex in this context when WebAssembly was never designed to support a rich set of system calls? Is this really the right thing to do? Um, so, the web goal of WebAssembly is to take a C++ program, compile it down so that it can be executed on, on the, in the browser, right? And, and the kind of applications that WebAssembly is being used for is these kind of applications. Like, you can actually find some scientific simulations being written for WebAssembly. Uh, you can also find some compilers and debuggers being written for WebAssembly. So, yeah, so, so the spec benchmarks are actually a better alternative, at least a better alternative than PolyBen C benchmarks. But it doesn't seem like WebAssembly natively supports spec, and you have to go like way out of your way to actually be able to run them. So, mm, uh, so doesn't it seem out of bounds for yeah, WebAssembly? So, uh, so, web so when you compile these spec benchmarks, we do not have to add, need to add any extra instructions. We need to provide an interface over the WebAssembly so that it will be able to execute it. So, so yeah, so WebAssembly uh, instruction set does, does support it, but it needs, uh, it, it needs a little bit of an interface around it to so, to so that we'll be able to benchmark them. So we really wanted to use a benchmark suite which has been tested and used for the last decades or so uh, instead of developing a new benchmark suite. Thanks. Two quick questions. Uh, one is, uh, did you try any other architecture with a lesser uh, Stone Age uh, register pressure problem like ARM uh, sorry, 64? I, I, I could not follow the question. Did you try any other instruction set other than Intel where the register pressure was not such a big issue? You mean 64-bit uh, ARM, for example? Did you try any other instruction set for your test bed instead of Intel? Okay, no, yeah, it's x86. That's that's what we tried here. So, I suggest try it on, on something else. Another curiosity would be uh, if you were to give more time to the optimizer, yeah, then then how what the numbers would be so yeah, that yes, uh, yeah. so the users that can tolerate longer compile times, yep, yep. maybe the equivalent of a dash O fast. Yeah, def definitely. See, these are, as I said, these are some missing optimizations that, that can be added with better engineering effort. Uh, so this was one of, one of the things. Other three are like, you cannot do anything about the browser restrictions that are be being applied to it. Uh, if, if you have to execute WebAssembly in a browser or the design issues that are inherent to WebAssembly. Hi, John Criswell, University of Rochester. Nice work. Um, one question I have is that um, there's a tension between generating good code and generating code quickly, right? And so you've identified the problem that, that you're generating code quickly but not high quality code. Um, have you thought about what sort of algorithms for instruction selection, register allocation, so forth and so on, might hit that sweet spot between being fast enough for use in just-in-time compilation and yet still generate, you know, efficient, efficient code? Yeah, um, so uh, we have not thought about that yet. Uh, like the the main purpose of this work was to, you know, to find what other issues are, and we find these issues. Uh, we have shared our results with, uh, like, other the teams of Google, uh, V8 and all. And uh, well, if we actually think about it, then uh, we can have maybe use better parallelism to, to decrease the amount of cost that these, uh, these phases has. Like for example. Okay, maybe we should yeah. chat offline. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, so that finishes the session, and thanks to the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.